electric car sales are going absolutely crazy, but nobody realizes. I don't know why the media is saying nothing. When you look at the actual numbers and you realize that we just had a record month for an off month, it is actually showing what is about to happen. It's interesting. It's the tipping point. It's that part of the S curve where things get crazy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing and for supporting the electric revolution. It's the only revolution that makes a lot of sense right now. And it's amazing. It's really an amazing and a fortunate time to be alive. I mean, it really is not a better time to be alive. I remember someone asked me a question once, a group of people, someone said, if you could choose what time to be born in, when would you choose to be born? And they went around the room and everyone asked, everyone gave their answers to the question. Someone said, oh, oh, it would have been amazing to have lived 500 years ago. And someone else said, and it got to me and I was thinking, are these people crazy? They all said some other previous point in history. I was thinking, are they absolutely out of their minds? And I said, now, right now, it's not even a question. Hands down, the best time to be alive is right at this moment, right now. And you could say the same thing a year into the future, I think, probably five years into the future. Time will simply keep on improving. Now, I think a lot of people say that I'm an optimist by saying that. I don't think I am. I think that's actually objectively true. When you look at the statistical measures of how good the world is right now, one of the key measures of that is the adoption of renewable energy and electric cars, which are in fact improving our lives significantly and will continue to do so as the air that we breathe in becomes cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Huge benefit. Global plug-in registrations were up 60% in August 2022 compared to August of 2021, according to Clean Technica, reaching 847,000 vehicles. That's the best result ever for an off peak month, as in not the final month of a quarter. So Q3 will be the best quarter ever for electric cars in history, of course. But also, September will provide the best month in history by a pretty wide margin. September will be the first time the world reaches 1 million electric vehicle registrations in a month. 1 million in a single month, right? That would be a run rate of, what, nearly 12 million per year. That is crazy because that's about 18% of global vehicle production. Right now, electric vehicles, purely electric vehicles, I'm not talking about plug-in hybrids, just purely electric vehicles represent 11% of all car sales globally. That's a really good number. But if you look at that that run rate that we're going to hit in September, or we just hit, or we just have hit in September, you're looking at closer to 16 to 18% of all cars worldwide. That, my friends, means we are at that tipping point. I think most of you would agree it is here now. If you include all vehicle sales with a plug, so if you include plug-in hybrids, the total is 15%. However, added to the fact that plugless hybrids posted their highest growth rate since last March, an increase of 6% year on year, the significant correlation between HEVs and pure internal combustion engines is interesting. In August, Electric vehicles grew 66% year on year, much faster than plug-in hybrids, 47%. But if we exclude China from the plug-in hybrid vehicle tally, we discover that plug-in hybrids are down 9% year on year. Now, this is a, um, a story that I think a lot of people are still not aware of. I've been talking about this on the channel for months now, but people still don't realize plug-in hybrids as a percentage are going down. Electric, fully electric are going up. That is the trend. Please tell your friends, even if they're into EVs, a lot of them don't actually realize this fact. What this means is that August was the sixth consecutive month for a decline in the sales and therefore the popularity, it would seem, of plug-in hybrids. In August this year, the best-selling EV in the world was, of course, the Tesla Model Y with 65,000 deliveries. Clearly, that number will significantly increase in September. Why? Because we're seeing probably that many Model Ys come out of the factory in Shanghai alone in September. 
I reckon that's going to increase to around about 90,000 in September. So a big increase on the way for the world's best-selling EV, which very likely will become the best-selling car in the world in 2023. That's what I'm predicting. If any of you like a little friendly wager on that, let's do it. I made a video on why this will happen. I'll put a link in the description below. Remember, discounts are on the way. That will help. Plus, production numbers continue to increase all around the world. Number two was a BYD Song Plus. Number three was a BYD Chin Plus. Number four was a Wuling Hongwan Mini EV. Number five, Tesla Model 3 with 31,530. Number six was another BYD, the BYD Han, which will go on sale in Europe soon. The seventh best-selling car was the BYD Dolphin with 23,486 sales. That, in my view, would probably be the best-selling EV in the world if BYD were making more of them and selling them outside of China. They only sell them in China. The BYD Yen Plus, which is also called the Addo 3 here in Australia and New Zealand, and I believe maybe Singapore as well, that vehicle as well is going on sale in Europe within the next few months. Next, the ninth best-selling EV in the world was the Volkswagen ID4 with 17,000 deliveries. Tenth, GAC Aon S. 11th, the GAC Aon Y. Then, of course, BYD Tang, which will go on sale in Europe as well within the next few months in a number of different countries. And then the Hoson Nita was next. Now, if you have a look at this list, there is basically no manufacturers in this whole list here that are Legacy Auto. I mean, the only one you've got, really, is the Volkswagen ID4. What an insane disruption we're having right now that media is just not acknowledging at all. This entire list, what is there? There's no Hyundai, there's no Ford, there's no General Motors, there's no Toyota, there's no Honda, there's no Subaru, there's no Japanese car makers at all. Uh, interesting. Now, Clean Technica said one of the surprises of the month was the Chang'an Lumen joining the table in number 18, thanks to a production ramp up of its recent small EV. Now, I made a video about the Chang'an Lumen talking about why I thought it would be one of the best-selling EVs a few months ago. I'm going to put a link in the description below. I always like it when I'm right, but the point is, right, that car, the Chang'an Lumen, it's like a Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, but it's a little bit bigger. It looks way better. It's the one that I would pick out of the two, and it's the one I think more people are going to choose. It's a phenomenal little car. Check out that video if you haven't already seen it. So what about Volkswagen? How are they going? Well, obviously, they took the one single Legacy Auto place, ninth place, with the ID4 with 17,000 sales. But I thought all the media was saying that Volkswagen are dominating in Europe. Aren't they dominating? Hmm. Doesn't look all that dominating to me. But anyhow, that wasn't a record month for the ID4, but it allowed it to be the only legacy auto manufacturer model to make it into the top 20 EVs worldwide. Now, the interesting thing is here that if you look at the top 20 best selling cars, in China, right, the top 20 best-selling EVs in China, it's actually very similar to this list. And that makes sense because 60% of all EVs sold worldwide are sold in China. So on that note, let's have a quick look at what we think the EV sales were, or what we know they were for some of the manufacturers in September. In September, it looks like Tesla has delivered around 23,000 cars per week, which puts them at about 92,000 for the month. How do we know that? Insurance registration data was 23,000 per week on average. So that's our best guess for Tesla in China. Well, not necessarily in China, that's a production in China and their insurance in China, they may have produced more than that. They've gone overseas, we're not sure yet. We don't know BYD's deliveries yet. I'm gonna guess they were probably at about 160,000 if you include electrics and plug-in hybrids. So next up was Nita with 18,000 deliveries in September. Next was Li Auto with 11,531. Of course, Li Auto only make plug-in hybrids. Next was Leap Motor with 11,000. Then Neo with 10,900. Then Xpeng with a disappointing 8,500. Guys, Xpeng, what's going on with them? Very strange. They were meant to deliver 300,000 EVs this year. They're not going to come anywhere close to that number. Something's happening there. I've got to find out what that is. And when I find out, you'll be the first to know. Next was Zika with 8,276. 
So you can make the 001. I made a video on the 001, the new battery technology coming out in that thing. Really amazing car. The price of that car, base model, all wheel drive base model, 450 kilowatt, 43,000 US dollars, amazing car. Zika, of course, are ramping their deliveries up. They've significantly increased deliveries. I mean, look at this, April 2000, May 4000, June 4000, July 5000, August 7000, September 8300. And of course, Zika planned on selling their EVs all around the world, which would make complete sense, seeing as they're part of the Geely group, and Geely have Polestar and Volvo. I can't wait to see the Zika 001 come to Australia. I would love to have a test drive of one of those. So let's have a look at the January to August figures. Who's first? Of course, Tesla Model Y, 410,000 so far. Willing Hong Wan Mini EV is second with 280,000. Tesla Model 3, third with 270,000. Then you've got four BYDs in a row, the Song, Chin Plus, the Han, then the Dolphin, then the ID4 with 99,880. So that gives you an idea, like comparing the Model Y versus ID4, 410,000 versus 99,880. That's a big, big difference there. In fact, that's more than four times as many sales of Model Y, right, versus ID4. Then you've got two more BYDs, and of course, a bunch of different Chinese cars. However, there is one car manufacturer here in this list, Kia Hyundai, right? That is legacy auto outside of Volkswagen. Hyundai Ioniq 5 with 67,000, and then of course the EV6 with 54,000. Both very good EVs, but clearly, as you can see, neither of those vehicles made the top 20 list of best-selling EVs worldwide in August. So what about Tesla? What are they planning on doing for the rest of the year? Well, they're planning on producing 500,000 Model Ys and Model 3s in Q4. 500,000. That's crazy, but it's awesome. And I'm excited to see it. You know what? This tipping point is going to be at a moment in history where we can kind of like look back and say to our kids, friends, people in general, remember that time back in 2022 when everything changed, when EVs took over well it's about to happen thanks for watching see you on the next video bye bye